of the YouTube channel, Raising the Vibe. I went to West Africa. I had a month long trip and I went to the Gambia and I also spent some time in Senegal. I went first to the Gambia, stayed there for a while. Then we took a road trip actually to Senegal and we stayed there for maybe four days. And then I came back and stayed three more weeks in the Gambia. Oh my goodness, I did so many great things while I was there. First was Senegal. I went to Gori Island, which is one of the slave dungeons where they kept the slaves. I went to the point of no return. I saw all uh, the aspects of that island, which actually was very, parts of it were very emotional to understand that our people came before me and were enslaved through this location. I also there went to the African Renaissance Museum, which is the big statue of the man, the woman, and the child, where the child is pointing over, it's a Pan-African statue, and the child is pointing to our future, which is directly to the uh, Statue of Liberty in New York. Um, I went to beach malls and all of that in Senegal as well. In the Gambia, I went to a variety of places. I went to a repat village. There's a um, video on my channel that talks about that with a man who offers people from uh, America and the UK to come over to him, to stay in his location, to share their skills while he teaches them the African way. So that's a repatriation village. I went to, um, oh my God, there's so much beach there. They're surrounded by beach. I went to many beautiful beaches. Um, I, what is the African way? What are you talking about? The African way? What is that? Well, you know, I can't tell you that I know everything about the African way, but some of the things that really stood out to me, it is a type of living that is much more in conjunction, in connection with nature. So here, where in the city, there can't be certain kinds of animals. The animals have to be on the farm. They have to be caged. They have to be this. There are dogs walking among us. And here, I really don't fool with dogs, but their dog will be lying behind my chair on the beach sleeping because they know that at some point we're gonna eat something and we're gonna have something for them. They're not aggressive. There are goats walking down the street. I have pictures of cows right in my face. We'll be riding down the road. The drivers will stop to let the cows cross the road. So there's much more of a connection there. We're in harmony with nature. We're in harmony with other animals. Here, I don't feel that. I feel that here, everywhere, there's a, a, a group of trees. These people are gonna come in, cut them down and build up something, some concrete structure, not really understanding the symbiotic nature between man and trees. So that I think is the primary thing for me. Also, and I'm not sure if this is because I was in a more of a vacation mode, I wasn't doing that much work there. It is more focused on your daily living. We're gonna get up, we're gonna to go to market, get some produce. We're doing the things that we're doing to live every day. Whereas here, we're so caught up in the rat race. What's the job? What's the work? And then your living is pushed to the side. You might grab something fast food, which obviously is not beneficial. You might grab a energy drink to sustain you so that you can continue working. I think the focus is off here on the wrong things. You think our people would benefit from like um, mass trips there, even if it's just a visit? Every, every person in the diaspora, every black person would benefit from going back there, absorbing that energy, connecting with that African sun, connecting with those people. Every, and this was my second trip. So I've been to four, four countries on the continent now. Every country I go to, men and women, welcome my sister. They're happy to see us back. They're happy to know that we broke through the mainstream media programming that makes us think that everybody's living in a grass hut or in a jungle and that we came there. They're so happy that we come there. And I think that we all can benefit from that. And just from absorbing that energy that will wake up your melanin and help you to begin to understand who you are and why you're here. Talking about melanin, did you get a chance to connect to any water, any uh, rivers or 
any water. I did go to a lot of beaches. The interesting thing about Senegal and the Gambia is that they're both surrounded by water. So I went to five, eight, ten beaches in the Gambia. I went to the beach mall in Senegal. Everywhere you look is water. So yes, there was a lot of connecting. Now I did not, I did get out and, you know, make sure I put my feet, let it hit up on my legs and thighs, but I didn't like go swimming in it. But I connected with that, with that water and everything that it could bring to me. Right, well, that was many years ago. Powerful, you know, I really believe in the power of water and I believe that people underestimate it. Water can be a destructive force. If you don't pay attention, water will tear up everything around it, but you can also use that energy to build up. You can state affirmations in your water and drink that water and help to transform your. I'm a daughter of the water. I believe in the power of the water. So I'm definitely on board with that. Okay, okay. All right, how, how have you been feeling since you've been back, man? You're full of energy, Ooh. full of radiance, man, so. I'm going to tell you truthfully, the first few weeks were difficult and I just kept feeling like, man, I'm sick of all this mess going on here. I want to go back. I mean, because let me tell you this in Senegal, when I was there, there is more of a COVID presence. So they wanted us to wear masks. They had a lockdown, a curfew at 9 p.m., which we never made, but you do shoot for it. And at one point, a police officer stopped us because I wasn't wearing my mask and I was we weren't wearing a mask okay and so a police officer stopped us and i was upset they had taken the driver's license he had to go back and do whatever actually pay him a little bit to get his license and i was really upset by that but he said and he's from america too his his dad is african and he said turned to me and said but you know you didn't realize it because they speak wolof you didn't realize it but when the police walked up he said Hello, how are you doing today? How's the family? Okay, it's a whole different mindset. In the Gambia, every day they're stopping you. There are checkpoints. People are, the police are stopping you. And a few times, a couple of them had machine guns strapped to the front of them. But now one time, did anybody get shot, wrestled to the ground, handcuffed, bullied? It was always, how you doing? Sometimes the driver I was with, oh, I went to school with him or whatever, but nothing like the kinds of things that go on here in America. So it was difficult at first for me to get readjusted to what's going on here. And I would just say just this last week, which was about my third or fourth week back, did I start to feel like, okay, I'm back home, I'm feeling good. I generally have a good life. Nobody's perfect, but I'm blessed. And so I started feeling that again. So I'm just getting back to myself. And initially I was waking up at like 2 a.m. every morning, which would have been 7 a.m. there. Right, right. For like a couple weeks straight, I right, woke right, up right. at 2 a.m. every morning. So, but now I'm getting back into the groove. I'm back here. There are advantages to being here. It's, I think it's just important that wherever you are, you find the things that work for you there and you focus on those so that you bring more positivity into your life. And so I'm back in a space where Not I'm doing that. Tell us a little bit about well, energy, what you're bringing back to us. Well, I was doing the vlogs before I left because my goal is to empower our people, to help us understand that the food we're eating, that the water we're drinking, that our Failure to go outside and interact with nature is harming us and preventing us from becoming all that we can be. Now though, the channel has shifted and I'm just showing all the sites from Africa. I want people to see it is not what you thought. It is not perfect, it is not a panacea, but it is a place where we can go and be empowered and feel comfortable. Black people aren't really welcome here. And the whole system is set up in a way that does not benefit us. And I just, am aware that there are other places, specifically the motherland, where we can go and be embraced. And I want to show that. I want to show people there's beauty in Africa. There are palm trees, there's beaches. There, um, they live differently. They live in gated homes made with tile and cement. And it's a more extra, it, it actually on some level is more extravagant, extravagant but it's uh, less costly in those countries. Other countries are different. Ghana, other places are very much different in terms of cost. But what I am bringing back, I think is very simple, is the experiences that I've had 
the feeling that I got there and I'm trying to translate that into the video so that people see what's available there and why it would be advisable to go because it is not what we have been taught to think it is. Right. Just dispelling the myth is probably more, you know, is probably just as important as anything else. And if you don't understand the richness of our history, the royalty, the kingdoms, just everything that we are and have always been, then you misunderstand who you are now. And so it is important for us to connect with that history and understand that Africa, even now, is the continent that has all the resources that uh, is empowering and enriching the whole rest of the globe. And people don't get that, where all the resources are. Don't forget that. All the gold, all the cocoa, all the bauxite, all the minerals that every, that's why they're always going over there trying to rape, rob, and pillage Africa. And guess what? The resources have not run out. That's what I've been thinking about all these centuries that they've been doing this and they're still plentiful. We come from the best place on this globe and it is important for us to realize that to embrace it, to go over as much as we can, to welcome Africans when they come here, to connect all of us across the diaspora, whether they're in Jamaica, UK, if they're melanated, they're part of our family and we need to embrace each other. That's my message.